Welcome back, everybody. It is time. You guys had some time to start your challenge. I see some building is going on, but this is our Q&A with our amazing college mentors who are here to lead the session. We have 30 minutes and they're gonna introduce themselves, but then it's your time. Teachers get to those keyboards and ask them some questions. So I'm gonna stop speaking and let Tiffany and Sophia introduce themselves and take it away. Perfect, thanks, Monica. I'll go ahead and get started. Hey everybody, my name is Sophia. I am a current junior at the University of Notre Dame and I'm studying aerospace engineering. And my interests in the field lie more on the space side of aerospace. Um, if you don't know, aerospace engineering is kind of broken up into two sections. There's the plane side and then the space side. So I'm definitely more interested in the space side. So that's like rockets, satellites, um, engines, things like that. Oh, one slide too far. Okay, there we go. So uh, on the screen here is sort of my engineering timeline, um, and I'm going to walk you guys through it. Um, this is just how I've gotten to where I am today. So I graduated from high school in 2021. I'm from Ohio. I went to um, a public high school called Finley High School. Um, and in high school, I honestly did not know I wanted to do engineering. Um, for a while, I thought I wanted to be a doctor. So all of the things I did in high school um, were actually for pre-med. So I took all of the anatomy classes. I shadowed doctors. Um, it actually wasn't until my senior year after I got accepted into Notre Dame that I knew I wanted to be an engineer. So in high school, I really didn't do anything um, with engineering at all. I spent a lot of time volunteering. I played soccer. I played for my high school and for a club team. Um, so yeah, nothing with engineering at all, except for the fact that I like math and science. Um, so then I got accepted to Notre Dame. I started in the fall of 2021. Um, and right, I actually applied to Notre Dame biology. And then after I got accepted, I switched to aerospace engineering. Um, and I immediately joined the rocketry team. I'm like, I really like rockets. So during the summer before my freshman year, I looked up all of the clubs at Notre Dame and I saw that the rocketry team was one of them. So I joined at the beginning of my freshman year. Um, and then in sophomore year, uh, I was still on the rocketry team as well. I was the lead of our educational outreach program. So I got to go to a bunch of different schools in the area and I got to talk to kids about space, rockets, engineering. Um, and I thought that was really fun. And then the summer after my sophomore year is when I got my first internship. I interned at a company called Maxar Technologies, which is a big satellite company in California. And that was really cool. I got to work with the electrical testing team. So um, I wrote all of the test scripts that we would run on our satellites before they launched to space. And it was also really cool because I was at the assembly building. So I was on the floor working on the actual spacecraft every single day. Um, and it was really awesome. I came in at the end of a lot of programs. So every satellite I worked on, I got to see launch to space, which was really fun. And I'm currently a junior. Um, I'm still on the rocketry team. I spend most of my time with rocketry. Um, and this year I'm actually a design lead. So I'm leading our payload design team. And I think you guys got to design your own payloads for your rockets. So that's kind of similar to what I'm doing, um, just on a little bit of a different scale. And I'm currently in the process of applying to internships for the summer. I have no idea what I'm gonna do yet, um, but hopefully I'll figure it out soon. And then I'm going to graduate hopefully next year. Um, and I think that I wanna go to graduate school after and get either my master's or my PhD. Oh my gosh, I'm so bad at this. Okay, there we go. So here are just a few photos of things I've done over the years. Um, the picture in the middle with the satellite, uh, that's one of the satellites I got to work on this past summer. Um, it's called Jupiter-3. It's actually the biggest communication satellite that's in orbit right now. So that was really awesome. That's me with a few of, of the interns I worked with. Um, every other picture is from the rocketry team because that's where I spent all of my time. So um, there was one time we got to go on a tour at Blue Origin down in Huntsville. So there's us there. Um, the picture in the middle of the screen is one of the rockets we designed. That was the one from last year. Um, and everything else is kind of just me hanging out with the squad, building rockets. All right. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to Tiffany. Awesome. There we go. This, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Okay. That's okay. Um, so good morning, everyone. My name is Tiffany Jones. I'm a current senior at Bucknell University, and I'm studying chemical engineering um, with a concentration in food science. Um, uh, in terms of my interest for engineering, I'm interested in like the food industry or cosmetics. Um, last year I was an intern at PepsiCo on, um, their process engineering team. And next year I'll be full-time a global manufacturing trainee at Kraft Heinz. Um, so you can go to the next slide. 
So a little bit about my engineering journey. Um, it's a little different from Sophia's. In high school, I was actually in an engineering program. Um, I went to an all-girls school, and basically our program started our junior year, and we basically learned about um, the different disciplines within engineering, different industries that we might want to go into, and what sort of real-life problems look like for engineers in various fields. Um, so this was a two-year program. Basically, the first year was learning all about engineering, and then the second year, we did a lot of different plant tours and interacting with um, women in the field, which is pretty motivating. So from that, I knew I wanted to study chemical engineering because it was like my favorite module that we were learning from. Um, and so I applied to go into uh, chemical engineering at a bunch of different schools, but ended up at Bucknell, um, which is in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania. I'm originally from Westchester, New York. Um, at Bucknell, I've done a lot in terms of engineering. So um, on my campus, I'm part of AICAG, which is the which is the American Institute of Chemical Engineers. Um, so within this program, I've attended a couple of conferences where basically the students can go present their research. Um, there are career fairs, workshops, um, and a bunch of different networking opportunities. So that is one outlet that I've been involved with. Um, I've also done undergraduate research over the summer. So these pictures here, the little cuvettes, and then the plastics on the lab bench there. That was my research. I did my sophomore summer in pharmaceuticals. Um, with one of my favorite professors, even though it's not an industry I was necessarily interested in, um, just because of the relationship I had with my professor and wanting to get to learn a little bit about something different, um, I had that opportunity over the summer, which was pretty cool. And so my research was on hydrogels, degradable ones, um, and I was doing tests on like their adhesion so that they can later be implemented as um, medical devices for um, patients to take and then have their medicine sort of degrade over time. So that's what my first research project was on. Um, I'm also a part of NSBE, which is the National Society of Black Engineers. I've been the president of Bucknell's chapter for the past um, two years, which has been really great. Um, getting to collaborate with other students of color on campus in various different engineering fields has been awesome. Um, last year, our chapter attended NSBE 49, which was in Kansas City, uh, which is my first time going. It was really nice, and we look forward to going to NSBE 50, which this year is in Atlanta, Georgia. So maybe I'll see some of um, the collegiate or in high school chapters there. Um, let's see. So in terms of my, um, I guess, experience outside of academics, my sophomore year, I also was a part of L'Oreal's um, sophomore fellowship, where basically I got to work with students across different majors, um, and we worked on different case studies throughout the summer. So that was a really nice, again, network, op network opportunity. Um, as I mentioned before, I did my internship at PepsiCo. I was in the research and development function on the process engineering team. So that was pretty fun. And I was on the beverages side. And um, I actually took a fermentation course here at Bucknell, which is that picture at the bottom, uh, where we got to learn about the process of brew making and the science behind it. And so we spent the semester just making a bunch of beers, which is awesome. Um, and right now I'm doing research on cheddar cheese, which is why I have a random picture of cheese on the slide. Um, and basically just trying to study the difference between, you know, what makes cheddar cheese versus mozzarella cheese versus American cheese, et cetera. Um, and then, as I mentioned before, I'll be a full time at Kraft Heinz next year, um, which is basically a food and beverage company. So I look forward to that. Um, and that is a little bit about my engineering journey. So I guess now we can move into the Q&A and I see a couple of questions already in the chat so we can get started. Um, the first question here, maybe we could both answer this is what has been your most memorable or fun engineering class that you've taken? Um, so I could start. I would say my most favorite engineering class would probably be my fermentation class, um, just because that was directly related to what I wanted to do in terms of um, after undergrad, so food and beverage. Um, and I was taking this class, I was a junior, but majority of the class were seniors. And I got to learn a lot about the different majors that were taking it because it wasn't just open to chemical engineers. So that was pretty cool. And we also got to tour a couple of breweries to see it at a larger scale compared to what we were doing in the lab. Um, so that was really fun. But I guess something more chemi related was my separations class where basically we 
it was very math based, but I think something that made it fun was my professor. She was like a great teacher. Um, and it had a lot to do with unit operations, which a lot of chemies learn about. So that was my favorite class. I'll pass it over to you, Sophia. Yeah. So my favorite class I took my sophomore year, um, it was called design tools. And this was a class, it was a project-based class. So all we did was CAD, which is a software where you can create things on the computer, like different models and things like that. So we got to make a stair climbing robot. So we created that on a computer and then um, we actually got to build it too. Um, Notre Dame has a really good engineering facility. Um, it's pretty new. It's called the Engineering Innovation Hub and it's just like a big machine shop. So we got to do, we got to use all of the machines um, and we made the stair climbing robot. And at the end, um, we got to test our stair climbing robots as a class. So we went to one of our main buildings on campus and we all had our robots walk up and down the stairs, which was really, really cool. And I had a lot of fun doing that. That's awesome. I'm gonna hop in with a question that I know a lot of high school teachers and students think about is time management. Like, how do you recommend uh, you know, handling your time since you have so many extracurriculars as long, along with your classes and then any tips for high school students. So talk about what you're doing now in college and any tips for those high school students that they can integrate now. Tiffany, you wanna go Actually, first? What's worked best for me um, in terms of time management is just blocking sections off of my schedule um, for homework. So every day I'll like set a certain time period of the day where I focus only on homework. Um, and this was something that I did in high school too, just because I was so busy with volunteering and I played soccer. Uh, the club I played for was like an hour and a half from my house. So I was always driving to practice. Um, so what really helped me was making sure that during the hours that I set aside, I was actually focusing on school and doing all of my work. So you guys can start doing that now. Um, just have like maybe 30 minutes to an hour a day, just focus on school and that will help you get in the good habit of doing it for college as well. That's a really good point. Um, something that's helped me, I hope that a lot of you are using like planners on your free time um, when it comes to planning everything. But for me, that's helped. I've used an online planner since I would say like eighth grade, I believe. And it's worked a lot for me. Basically, this planner, I could plan out, you know, my schedule. I have one tasks are due when I have exams coming up. Um, and it'll give you like seven day reminders, 14 day reminders. So I think planning ahead on that planner has helped me a lot. Um, but also when it comes to schoolwork and maybe there's like a really heavy week and it's towards finals or maybe, um, you know, we're about to go on break. So a lot of professors want to give us homework and stuff. Um, in that case, I sort of just take a more calculated method where I will just do work in the order that I have class um, so that it's not that hectic when it comes to planning. Um, so that's something that's helped me for the past four years. And um, I think that's something that also you could bring with you, you know, even after undergraduate, um, when it comes to working on different projects, if you decide to go straight into industry, or if you're continuing your education, you know, your research projects and everything, you want to make sure that you at least plan, I would say a week or two in advance of what you got to do. Because as you mentioned before, like a lot of students are involved and you're probably doing sports, or you're doing extracurriculars or different programs that you're involved in. So I think having a handle on at least the week ahead of you will help ease um, a lot of that time management. So. All right. Well, I have a question from Thomas County Central High School and they ask, what minors are you doing along with engineering and why? Um, I could start with this one. Okay, um, go ahead. So, yes. Yeah, so, uh, here at Bucknell, we offer concentrations, which is very similar to a minor. Um, but with the concentrations, it's basically uh, related to your major, if that makes sense. So, for me, I decided to do food science again <laughs> in the um, food and beverage industry. So, I was inspired to go for that concentration because I wanted to take more electives that relate to what I might be doing after undergrad. Um, and with this concentration, it's opened up the opportunity for the research that I'm doing right now with cheddar cheese, um, that fermentation class. And then we also take um, food and technology, which is on the nano scale of the different, um, you know, chemical relations that take place in like processed foods and beverages. Um, so that's what's inspired me to go for the minor. But something I'll also say that I've taken advantage of is uh, my electives here. I've taken like six different management courses, even though I'm not in the management school. So I would say, even if you're, if you think you're interested, like aren't overlapped, I would say just go for them because at college, you'll be able to sort of mix and match your um, education while you're there. And I would definitely take advantage of that. 
Okay, so I just got another question. Um, how much math do you need to know to become an engineer and what math classes do you have to take? Um, so I can start with this. Um, at Notre Dame, the math, the math classes that you have to take is standardized for every engineering. Um, so every engineer at Notre Dame has to take calculus one, two, and three, and then a class called linear algebra. And then if you're aerospace or mechanical, you have to take differential equations one and two. So I'm currently in differential equations one. Um, and it, I will say it is a little bit tough, but all of the classes that you take will help prepare you for the higher level classes. So you'll start at the bottom and then work your way up to the more advanced ones. Um, and at first, when I started taking the math classes, I thought they were so pointless. I'm like, this is so dumb. I'm not a math major. Why do I have to take all of these? Um, but then I took a dynamics class the spring of my sophomore year. Um, and that was the first class where I actually started using all of the math that I was learning. So we use a lot of concepts from linear algebra and calculus three. Um, so in terms of math, you need to know to be an engineer. You don't have to know how to do like super crazy calculations, but uh, you need to be able to understand everything conceptually and be able to apply it to physics or fluid, like those kind of related problems. Um, very similar for Bucknell. We take Calc 1, 2, and 3, um, differential equations, and then you'll most likely have to take stats. Uh, but something that your university might do wherever you end up is that they'll um, I guess, cater those courses towards your major. So my stats class, for example, was just for chemical engineers, fluid dynamics, dynamics just for chemical engineers, and same thing with my DiffEQ. So um, again, you don't have to come in, as Sophia said, you don't have to be a professional in math or anything. You'll learn it all again. But just having that method when it comes to learning and um, being able to study and sort of pick up different concepts is something that you'll need for all the levels of math that you take. All right, I have a question that came to me and it's from Norfolk Te Technical Center. What was the most challenging project that you have ever done? So let's start with Sophia since Tiffany just wrapped up her last question. Go ahead, Sophia. Yeah, so like I said before, I'm on the rocketry team um, and this year I'm leading our payload design team um, and we compete in one of NASA's student launch competitions. So every year we design, build and launch a rocket and then we compete against a bunch of different colleges at the end of the year. Um, every year, NASA gives us a new payload design challenge. So the one for this year was to make something that deploys from our rocket between 500 and 800 feet above the ground. So when the rocket's in the air, we have to create something that shoots out of the rocket. Um, and it has to be five pounds and it has to land on the ground under a certain kinetic energy uh, without the use of a parachute, um, which sounds pretty hard because normally when you recover a rocket or anything from the air, you use a parachute. So what we came up with is an auto rotation device so if you guys have ever seen those little helicopter seeds on the ground um, that you throw up and they like spin down, we're basically making one of those, um, but it's like a six foot um, radius. It's huge. So that's definitely been the hardest thing that I've ever worked on. Um, we're still in the design process and we're going to start building next semester. But in terms of challenging engineering projects, that one is definitely up there. Cool. Um, I'll share, I guess right now, um, one of my senior design courses were designing a chemical plant from the ground up. So I would say this has been probably the most challenging project I've worked on. Um, basically, we all design like a chemical route that we would like to design for. And my group is converting um, CO2 to propane. And so we go through the whole process of finding where we'd like to put our plant, um, all the utilities, all the unit operations that we would like to um, add to this. Uh, a lot of it is simulation based. So we use platforms where you can do different case studies with um, unit operations like distillation columns and compressors and um, knockout drums and reactors. So that has been the most challenging project, I think, up to this point. Uh, but I'll also share a fun one. Um, I'm doing interdisciplinary senior design and we're building an exhibit for a children's museum. So that has been pretty interesting and we look forward to installing it next semester. Fantastic. I received a follow-up question for you, Sophia, and this is from Tomahawk High School. And it, what was the most difficult challenge when building a rocket? Yeah, so I would say the most difficult thing when building a rocket um, is just integrating everything together. So um, when you think of rock, when you think of a rocket, there's like a ton of different components that go into it. So you have your actual rocket, the launch vehicle, which is the hard part, um, everything that goes inside, so like your payload, and then the parachutes, which help recover it. Um, and making sure that everything works together perfectly is definitely the hardest part. Um, so every year we always fail a few times. Um, this past launch, so two weeks ago, 
we went to launch our rocket and it went up perfectly. Like the motor worked, it fired. Um, but then our parachutes never came out. So our rocket went from like 2000 feet in the air straight to the ground. Um, and it like smashed into the ground, broke everything inside. So we have to redo it again this week. But definitely the hardest part is making sure everything integrates uh, together properly. I think some of our teams are experiencing that today with this rocket that they're trying to launch in their classroom. So they definitely can relate to that, I think. So yeah, have- it happens all the time. I don't know if any of you guys watched the recent Starship launch um, from SpaceX. It was just a test launch, but um, it exploded in the air too. So even big space companies mess up sometimes, but it's all about how you come back from your mistakes. So that's one of the engineering lessons that we keep hearing about, you know, in all of these engineering tomorrow labs and and the days. It's about failure and learning from your failures. Do you guys have any tips for these groups, you know, just how to deal with those failures and and what to take away those, how to take away those lessons? Yeah, perfect. I can start. So um, I would say the biggest thing when coming back from failures is just not to get discouraged. Um, There's so many times where it's so easy to say, oh, I messed up, I'm just going to give up and not try again. Especially when you're working on an engineering project, a lot of times the project that you're working on takes a really long time to do and construction always takes forever. So even when something doesn't go right, um, you should always keep trying, even if it's going to take a long time because you never know the next time you might succeed and then it could be really cool. Um, I would say another important aspect is just communication. Like Um, As Sophia mentioned, with a lot of the projects that you work on, it most likely will not go right the first time you actually run it or the first time that you design it. Um, And with my internship in specific, like there was a lot of trial and error, but something that's really important is just communicating that with the rest of your team, your supervisors, et cetera, so that everyone's on the same page. And that's, you can also get some outside opinions um, when it comes to, you know, coming up with that next trial or some changes that you would like to implement. So communication is really important. Um, And then also just documentation. So when you make that mistake, you'll know in the future, oh, this is what we did before. Let's try something else instead of going off of like memory and everything like that. So I think two important things when you're going through different projects, both team-based and also individual-based is just communication like and documentation, I think, are important. Fantastic. I see a couple of questions in the chat. Um, Do you want to go to space? I actually do. So my dream job is to become an astronaut. Um, So during high school, before I switched to engineering, when I was still like in my pre-med era, um, there was just like one random day where I was talking to my friend. She also wanted to be a doctor at the time. And we kind of came to the realization like, wait, we don't actually have to be doctors, even though we've been thinking about this our whole lives. Like we don't actually have to. Um, And I was like, I think it would be really cool to be an astronaut. Um, So that was the day my mentality kind of changed. And I was like, instead of just trying to go um, into the field that I think I should go into, um, I decided to go into the field that I want to. So um, I'm studying aerospace engineering, hopefully going to grad school, and then fingers crossed someday, I would love to be an astronaut. Um, And my dream destination is definitely Mars. And I think we're in the time period where um, it seems a little more feasible than it did maybe 10 years ago. I guess I could also answer the dream job question. I don't necessarily want to go to space, but that's awesome. Um, In terms of dream job, uh, I definitely see myself staying in either food and beverage or venturing off to cosmetics. Um, And I would just love to be a part of a team that, you know, makes a difference, which I'm sure all of them do. But in the long run, you know, being able to see a project that you worked on, you know, on the shelves at a supermarket or in your pantry or in your friend's pantries, um, that's something that excites me being able to say like, hey, yeah, I worked on that. You know, what do you think about it? And then being able to change it so that it's better for our consumers. Um, especially with everything going on now, like considering our environment and the consumer health and everything. So I think my dream job is just being able to make a difference in the industry that I'm in. And um, yeah. That is fantastic. So I'm going to uh, have one last question for both of you ladies, and then we're going to wrap up uh, the Q&A portion. And the question is, so what is some advice for these young high schoolers that are here today, if you could provide them with some advice for their next step, if they are interested in engineering, if they're interested in space or engineering in general, what do you think uh, are some good advice for these high school students to continue to hold on to for the rest of the day and for the rest of their journey? 
yeah, I can go ahead and start with this one. Um, so my biggest piece of advice is just to do what you love. Um, so whatever you pick, it doesn't matter what field you go into, even if it's engineering or not engineering, just make sure that every day when you wake up, you're excited to go to classes because you love what you're learning. Um, and that's definitely helped me a lot throughout college. Uh, sometimes the classes get a little bit stressful and hard, um, but I love everything that I'm learning. So in my mind, I'm like, it will be worth it one day. Um, so make sure that whenever you wake up, um, you're doing something that you're passionate about. Um, and I will say to be a sponge. So like with learning, you know, whatever field that you're interested in, just be willing to learn, um, you know, from those mistakes, learn from successful projects, learn from projects that didn't go well, learn from people that have been in your shoes before you, um, learn from your teammates, learn even from yourself as you're going through undergrad um, and potentially graduate school. So I would say that's something I just, I keep in my mind literally all the time is just to be a sponge, learn something new, and then kind of just take that and run with it however it best fits you. So that would be my advice for everyone. I love both of your tips. Uh, fantastic job, Sophia and Tiffany. I want to say thank you for leading our Q&A. We're going to open up those breakout rooms again, but 